Hello and welcome to the Love the Counters channel. My name is Kevin. Uh, this is the Definitions Part 2 where I'm going to cover jugs and carafes. I hope you enjoyed this subject. Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about other things as well. I've already done uh, decanters and claret jugs, so I'll be moving away through lots of different things. And I hope you enjoy this subject. Here are a couple of cream jugs. Um, on them you can see that the handles are as I previously described with the, those claret jugs, where the one on the left, the handle is applied from the bottom to the top, and then the one on the right, the handle is applied from the top to the bottom. Um, so I don't know exactly how old the one on the left is. I think it's probably early 20th century. The one on the right is an 18th century one, um, and also has what's known as a piggy tail on the handle. So this is a piggy tail. You can see it's just got a little curly bit down here and um, and also the other thing that you can see on them so this one has what's known as a polished pontle and this one has what's known as a broken pontle which is this mark here at the bottom uh, and that's to do with hand handmade glass and it's to um, do with how they're made um, I would probably have to do a whole show or a whole, whole video on how um, Glass, hand, handmade glass is blown and how that works. Here are a couple of aesthetic movement jugs. Um, the one on the left is it's like an intermediate size. I've been told those are milk jugs but I very much doubt that's seen any milk. Um, that's usually the kind of jug that you'd have for um, having water with your whiskey. Um, yeah, and the one on the right is a water jug, but however, I, I would suspect that jug has probably been used to serve wine because it's more of a Uri type thing. So yeah, it's, some of these descriptions of jugs as water jugs, milk jugs and cream jugs don't really fit with how they're used and, and it can change slightly over time and yeah, it's it is all a bit wishy-washy but I will just stick with small tiny jugs and cream jugs middle jugs and milk jugs and big jugs are either water or lemonade jugs here's a couple more jugs these are water or lemonade jugs depending on what you want to describe them and they show completely different um, design philosophies um, the one on the left is an Art Nouveau one from sort of like second uh, 1900, and the one on the right is a um, is a Scandinavian one. Um, and also, the one on the left holds about a pint and a half, and the one on the right holds about three pints. So, yeah, completely different scales, completely different looks, and you can see how different things can be, and um, where your tastes can go if you're interested in collecting glass. I'm showing you these two jugs to show you the difference between a jug and a ewer. So in my book, a ewer um, has like a foot at the bottom and a tall thin neck or a thin neck um, and a stem on the foot. Uh, and a jug just sits on the ground and um, yeah, jugs can have a thin neck, but this one's got, got no foot. So, um, and these are both Scandinavian. I think the company is Lindhammer. Um, so yeah, I um, just thought I'd show you these two to show you that difference because they're, they're from the same stable so you can, if the difference is clear between the jug on the left and the ewer on the right. I'm showing you the two basic kinds of carafe there are. Um, the one on the left is a full size carafe that will take a, um, a bottle of wine. Uh, the one on the right um, is what's known as a guest carafe, so you could just probably put, I don't know, a quarter of a bottle in it or something like that. So that's intended for an individual person to use. And um, what makes it a carafe is that the hole is bigger than it is on a normal decanter, and also it's never been fitted. It's not, it's not, when you rub, put your sticky fingers down the neck, you, you can't feel anywhere where it's been cut or ground out to um, fit the stopper. So that's what makes a carafe a carafe, no stopper. 
and never intended to have a stopper. I'm showing you uh, another carafe here. So on the right is the um, is the guest carafe from about 1800, and on the left is a, a Regency, and that is a Magnum carafe. So you don't see many Magnum carafes around. Um, in fact, that's the only one I've seen, and I've got it. So um, yeah, they're not very common. And also, I'll just show you another. Um, guest carafe that I've got here because they do come in different kinds. This one might have been used for wine or something. But this one, um, this is a slightly later one, probably from around the 1850s. Um, that's a guest carafe too. That one would probably be for water. It may have had a tumbler that would go over the top of it like this, that would fit onto it. And um, yeah, and the green colour, um, that's done with uranium. So under the right light um, that actually glows. Um, if I stop this for a second and come back just so you can see how it glows put all the other lights off and you can see this is a UV light and you can see a bit of glowing going on there on the edge where I've shone the light and it's kind of a brighter green than it should be. Here's another type of carafe entirely. Um, these were kind of originally made in the 1860s and I think they made them right through to 1940. And they're kind of designed to um, mimic a, a leather bottle with sewing down the side and a ruffle around the neck to tighten up a, a leather water bottle. Um, you can see the, the sewing down the side is done with this little Riggery piece here. This is called Riggery. This is when you see this little strap with the little bits on it. This one doesn't have a Riggery stripe on it, but it does have. This is called threading. This kind of glass, and it is actually. Can you see? It's um actually a, like a thread of glass that's been wound round um, the neck of the or the the base and the neck of the of the carafe. So here are a couple more of the um, leather bottle type carafes. With a, um, this one doesn't have a, a frill like this one, it has a riggery around the neck and it kind of defies the expectations of being a carafe because it's got a stopper and the stopper is specifically made for it. You can see it's got that square shape and uh, stoppers has got a square shape too that fits quite like that. And this one also has the thread glass. Why it's so tiny, I don't know. What you'd use that for, I don't know, but it's really tiny. Uh, I would say not even big enough to be a guest um, carafe. Here are a couple more carafes from the late Victorian period. They do look quite a lot like decanters. Um, the thing that, that makes them not decanters, because they don't even have that particularly broader neck, is that they've never been fitted. You can run your finger down the inside and it's completely smooth. They've never been fitted for a, um, for a stopper. And in fact, I I've, do I've have um, decanters like this, but they've got taller necks and they have stoppers, so they're about this high. So yeah. So they look like um, decanters, but they are carafes. And, and sometimes people will put stoppers in these. So the answer is take the stopper and just have a quick feel, just a quick check to see, is it a carafe? Was it ever intended to? Because if it's got the wrong stopper in it, it doesn't look right, it's worse to have the stopper in it because it just looks like, oh, it's, it's an incomplete um, decanter. But in actual fact, it is a complete carafe. I'm showing you this. It looks like a, a carafe, a very small carafe, small guest carafe, but it isn't. It is actually a gill. So although it has all the distinguished marks of a carafe because it's got a white neck and you know not fitted for stopper, the thing that makes it different is it, this line here. It's got a line etched around it, and that's actually because it's to measure um, drink. You would buy what's known as a gill or whiskey or something and they'd pour it into there and the barn would fill it up to that line and that's what you would drink. 
So yeah, it's not a carafe as such. It's called a gill. Um, they do come in different sizes. This is, I would say, medium sized ones, so you can buy bigger ones, but it's the line that makes the difference. So the line there tells you, it's a measure, it's a measure called a gill. Um, this type was made for quite, quite a long time, probably from 1830s, 40s through to the 1880s. And um, they were made, so this type of glass was made specifically for bars and hotels and pubs and things. Just to mess with your heads a little bit at the end, um, what I have here is a decanter and jug. The jug, although it's only about a pint um, and is the size of a milk jug, is really for water because the thing on the right that looks like a cocktail shaker is actually a decanter. Um, these are Scandinavian, um, mid-century, and um, yeah, so the one on the right is actually for spirits, so it's not for wine, and you would be having your probably your schnapps or something out of the little decanter and pouring watering it down with a bit of um, a bit of water thank you for watching this video there will be more um, topics I'd like to cover as definitions so uh, please look forward to those and um, stick with me and if you do like this video please like and subscribe thank you bye